Hello and welcome back to Advanced Machine Learning. I'm Ludwig Botmann and in this video I will introduce you to multi-target prediction. The idea is that you understand the practical relevance of multi-target prediction problems, that you know relevant special cases of multi-target prediction and that you understand the difference between inductive and transductive learning problems. What's multi-target prediction? <clears throat> In conventional supervised learning, the label space will be one-dimensional. Okay, this can be a real value, it can be something from 0, 1, or it can be some categorical target as well, but it's just one dimension. In multi-target prediction, we have multiple targets, well, as the term suggests, and it, these can be of mixed types. So this means we do not have only one target, but two different targets, for example, the real value and the binary, other target. And the naive strategy would be to learn just one model per target independently. And of course, in practice, we would have to prove that there is a better option than this. But well, because this is a, a solid first option, just learn different models per target. But the targets can be statistically dependent which then leads to multi-target prediction models, which are more than just learning a multitude of individual single target prediction models. Here is a motivating example. We have the emotions data set. This has four emotions of a music piece. So calm, quiet, sad, and angry. And these can be four different labels. <clears throat> and the important thing is that each music piece can have 0, 1, 2, 3, or all of those labels. Okay, so it's a, a binary for, for each of the four targets here. And as you can see here, the mutual information of the labels, for example, sad and angry, sorry, angry and calm here in that case uh, are somehow related and quiet and sad are also somehow related in this data set which means that perhaps there might be a better thing, it might be a better thing to tackle these targets simultaneously. Okay, let's fix the notation first. We have instances x from a feature space, that's exactly the same as always, nothing changes, changes with a feature space, but the targets are not just one, but multiple targets. So the training data set x and y has a slightly different structure. This yi here may now be a vector. So yi may be a vector of y1 to yl, where ymi is the label for target m and observation i. Okay, so we have l targets in this case, and ymi is the target for the mth, or the label for the mth target and the ith observation. Okay, so <clears throat> this means we have n instances and l targets. So we can arrange these, tar these labels in a matrix called Y, which has then dimension n times l, and of course Y may have missing values. These target spaces Y can be nominal, ordinal, or real valued, and the goal is to pre predict scores for any pair of feature and target. Okay, so for each target m from 1 to l, we want to predict the score for a new feature vector. More side note here, in conventional MTP settings, we have no available side information for the targets, but in later slides we will have the exact opposite situation where we have side information on targets, and I will tell you how to use those. <clears throat> First, some examples here, multivariate multi regression results if all the target spaces are just the real numbers. So ym is r for all the m. And we have an example here where, as always in the rows, we have some instances. These are proteins in that case. And in the columns, we have different targets. These are five, no, six molecules. And the numbers here show the binding strength between one protein and one molecule. So this binding strength may be a real value. And for each instance here in the rows, we want to predict the binding strength with each molecule. 
Next, we have multi-label classification. We could also call this multi-label binary classification because the target space is just 0, 1. So each column still refers to one target variable. And of course, each row refers to one instance. For example, we are assigning documents to category tags. And in this case, each document can have up to all these category tags. So the first document is a document about football, TV and Belgium. So, well, it's just a document which talks about football, TV and Belgium. We don't really know what this article is about right now, but it can have all those, all those labels here. But the labels are still binary. Of course, this can be multi-categorical then as well. We'll see that later, well, perhaps. <clears throat> then the third application would be a label ranking. So in this case, again, the rows are the instances. These are users of some platform. <clears throat> and in the columns, we have the preferences for specific activities. And each user now may specify his or her preferences. So this means that one row here is made up by ranks of this user. So we have football, then tennis, then skating, then biking, then running, and then walking for user one, and user two has a different ranking. So in each row, we have all numbers from one to six, and well, these constitute the rankings for that specific user. And then we have multitask learning. So it can happen that not all targets are relevant for all instances. So here in this example, we have, a, we have students and they may only attend one school. So, so for example, this student attends school one, this other student attends school three, and we have some final grades for a specific high school course. And here in that case, the label space is homogeneous across columns. So <clears throat> because we are measuring the same thing just for different schools, but we have a bunch of missing values here. Okay, as you can see, missing, 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 and so on. Okay, but that's allowed too. So two remarks, I already teased the first one here. It's also possible to have multi-class classification within each target M. Okay, so this would mean that the scores are then from R to the power of G with index M if we have G with index M classes or subscript classes. Techniques for multi-target learning are equally applicable, but the notation becomes somehow more cumbersome because of yeah, well, we have one, one more dimension. So let's first start all the, without the multi-class classification here. The target space second point here may be inhomogeneous. So we may have, for example, a binary target in row or in column M and a real value target in column K. That's totally allowed. And then, well, we have a mixture of multi-label classification and multivariate regression. So before once I talked a little bit about site information on targets. So in some applications, we may have additional information about the targets. So let's go back to the molecules and proteins example. So perhaps we know, you can't really see this in, in, this, in this plot here, but we, perhaps we may know something about those molecules, so have some graph representation or whatever that tells us that some of those molecules are somehow related. We can use this information, of course, for learning. Or we have a taxonomy or a hierarchy of the document categories so that well, you can't really see that here, but the tags are sports. And then within sports, we have tennis, football, and biking, for example. So tennis and football is closer related than Belgium and movies, for example. We can use that information. And a third kind of information is these feature representations. So perhaps we know something about those schools, that they are, have some geographical location, which is closer to other schools, closer between some schools than between others, and so on. These problems can be referred to as dyadic or link prediction. And again, we can arrange the labels in a matrix, which then may often be sparse. 
and then we can view this dyadic prediction as a multi-target prediction with target features. Now let's speak about inductive versus transductive learning. So in previous problems or in usual supervised learning, let's say, predictions need to be generated for novel instances, of course. So we have a training data set and then we have some new unseen test observations at prediction time where we want to predict the target and the targets are known before and, and observed during the training. Okay? These problems are inductive with respect to instances because at prediction time we're looking at totally new instances of course and transductive with respect to targets because we already know the possible set of targets. Okay? If we want to predict novel target targets, for example, in that molecule or in the documentation annotation example, so targets that we have not observed during training, then of course we need some information about those targets or about, about the targets in, in total so that we can somehow generalize to novel targets. So site information is very important here in that case. Now that we have transductive and inductive, we can of course make up a two, two cross two matrix with four settings here. Transductive with respect to targets and instances is for example predicting missing values of a score matrix. Then setting B is classical supervised learning, let's say, with transductive with respect to targets and inductive with respect to instances. And setting C turns it exactly around. We are inductive with respect to targets and transductive with respect to instances. So some targets are unobserved during training, but may appear at prediction time. And then last setting D is inductive with, with, with respect to both targets and instances. We can also call this zero-shot learning.